When you compare what Peter said in Acts chapter 2, verse 36, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly with what Paul said in Romans eleven thirteen, For I speak to you Gentiles. You see that they're speaking to two different groups of people. When you compare Acts chapter 1, verse 6, When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? When you compare that with Galatians chapter 1, verse 4, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world. And when you compare Acts chapter 10, verse 35, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted of him. With what Paul wrote in Titus chapter 3, verse 5, not by works of righteousness, which we've done, but according to his mercy he saved us. When you compare those things, you see that things that are different are not the same. When you compare Acts chapter 3, verse 21, things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began, with Romans 16, verse 25, where Paul says, according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. You wonder what's going on. Now, these are just four quotes from two different men. One was Peter, and the other was Paul. They said different things. When the Bible plainly says what you've just heard, quoted, and in one case it says one thing, while on the other hand it says something entirely different, what do we do? The only answer religion seems to have is compromise. Religion compromises by spiritualizing, allegorizing, getting a new translation, debating, or starting a new church, maybe. There's much confusion in religion, and God is not the author of confusion. Listen to what Paul says in Romans chapter 15, verse 8. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made to the fathers. The majority of the world's religious system makes the fatal mistake of anticipating revelation and tries to put the truths that were only known after they were revealed to the Apostle Paul back into the four Gospels, and they're simply not there. Peter, for instance, preached the gospel of the kingdom for three and a half years and did not even know that Christ was going to die, much less die for anyone's sins. Listen to Matthew chapter 16, verse 22. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. That was in response to the Lord telling the apostles he was going up to Jerusalem and be killed and be raised again the third day. This is just after Peter had been given the keys to the kingdom and the power to bind and loose. And they understood none of these things. And this saying was hid from them, the saying of Jesus about his death, burial, and resurrection. Neither knew they the things which were spoken, according to Luke chapter 18, verse 34. Now, following the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the women at the tomb going to tell the apostles that the Lord's body is missing and someone's taken it, the apostle John writes, For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. John chapter 20 verse 9. The situation is this. For three and a half years, Peter, James, John, and all had already gone about and preached the gospel of the kingdom. They healed the sick, raised the dead, and cast out demons. But they did not preach the fact that Christ died for our sins. They knew nothing at all about it. Therefore, the doctrine to the church, the body of Christ, is not in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, since the very essence of our faith is in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 4, What's the significance of this? That the gospel preached by the twelve apostles was pertaining to the restoration of the kingdom again to Israel and is not about the gospel of your salvation. The gospel of your salvation 
as in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13, is in Paul's epistles, Romans through Philemon. It's only there and there alone that you find the words or any information about the gospel of Christ or about the church, the body of Christ. Those terms are not mentioned anywhere else in your Bible. Peter, in Acts chapter 2, knows nothing at all about the church, the body of Christ. How can you tell? By the words that he speaks. By reading the words written in the verses, and by believing that words mean what they say, as they say it, where they say it, you can see that Peter, in all his sermons, never says Christ died for our sins. Some people say, well, Peter just wrote different than Paul. Could be if Peter even wrote at all. But the fact is, Luke wrote the book of Acts, which is a continuation of the gospel of Luke. Both books are addressed to Theophilus, which means friend of God. Check it out in Luke chapter 1, verse 3, and in Acts chapter 1, verse 1. Other people say, well, the words are not the same, but they mean the same thing. It's all the same. Now, I suspect that the people who say that are people who really don't know what the Bible does say, or else don't believe that words mean what they say. Do you mean to tell me that you believe that working righteousness and not working righteousness is the same thing? How can a man work righteousness and not work righteousness at the same time? People like to prove that Gentiles were in the picture in the Jewish church on the day of Pentecost, and they point to Cornelius in Acts chapter 10. And those same people believe that when Peter reluctantly showed up at the home of Cornelius, that he said, well, Cornelius, you know that the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. The fact is, Peter said no such thing. First of all, Peter was reluctant to go there. And when he gets there, what are the first words out of his mouth? Acts chapter 10, verse 28. And he said unto them, You know how that it's an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come to one of another nation. How can you get Gentiles in the picture on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 when here in Acts chapter 10, Peter thinks it's an unlawful thing for him to be there. Peter in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost does not know the why of the cross of Christ and Peter, in Acts 2, 3, 4, 5, and up to and including Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, never says Christ died for our sins. Instead, Peter preaches a murder indictment against the nation of Israel. Peter says in Acts chapter 2, verse 14, You men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken unto my words. Come on down to Acts chapter 2. Verse 22, ye men of Israel, hear these words. And then Acts 2.36, therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly. Who was dwelling in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost? Acts chapter 2 verse 5, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. And verse 9, 10, and 11 mentions about 50 nations those devout Jews were from. There were no Gentiles there in the Acts 2 church. And besides that, guess what? Not a single woman spoke in tongues. Twelve men spoke in tongues on the day of Pentecost, and they were Jews, 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 according to Acts chapter 2, verse 13, and there was not a Gentile in sight. Now, when Peter got to the home of Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, he doesn't say one single word different than what he's already said in Acts chapter 2, 3, 4, 5, and so forth. When Peter begins to preach to Cornelius, he says that, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Now, how did Peter perceive that? By the vision he had just before he got there. In a vision of a sheet let down from heaven, Peter is shown that Gentiles will be included 
in the earthly kingdom when it's time for the restitution of all things spoken by the mouth of all the holy prophets since the world began, as in Acts chapter 3, verse 21. Don't just take my word for it. Take the word of God for it. Read it for yourself and see what the Bible says. Read Acts chapter 2, 3, 4, and 5 and find out what the Bible says, not what some man says that it says. Peter told Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, verse 34 and 35, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. So the message to Cornelius was, keep on doing what you've been doing and you'll be allowed to enter the kingdom when the kingdom comes. Now there's quite a contrast between what Peter said to Cornelius and what Paul wrote to Titus in Titus chapter 3 verse 4 and 5. Paul writes, But after that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward men appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. Now anyone who says that what Peter said and what Paul said are the same thing has a reading problem. There's a difference here, and religion might as well face it. Paul had a different ministry and a different message than Peter did. Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 10 tells the apostles, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, but go only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And in Matthew chapter 15, verse 24, the Lord says, I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And in Romans chapter 15, verse 8, Paul writes, Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made to the fathers. So we see then that the Lord's earthly ministry had nothing at all to do with the Gentiles. Genesis 1 and 1 begins the Bible with these words. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That's two different places. And through the revelation of the mystery given to the Apostle Paul for us Gentiles, we begin to understand the twofold purpose of God, the ministry of reconciliation that was hid in God before the foundation of the world. The ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the ministry of Peter, James, and John, and the other Jewish apostles can be summed up in what Peter said in Acts chapter 3, in three verses, beginning at verse 19. Peter said to the men of Israel, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. On the other hand, the ministry of Paul could be summed up in one verse. Romans chapter 16 and verse 25. Now to him that is a power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. There's a difference between things spoken and things kept secret. Hence Paul writes in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15, Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, 